Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skull and today we're gonna take a look at the tab container node and the fundamentals of how you can use it. To start it all off I'm gonna create our main node and this will be the node containing the tab container node. Now as our main node I'm gonna use the control node in order to make the boundaries stretch to fit the entire game screen. So I'm gonna rename this to main, I'm going to go take a look at the anchor points on the right side here and make sure the right side is on our end and the bottom part is also on the end and the end means the right and bottom side. Now the anchor points may be a bit confusing if you are completely new to Godot and frankly it was to me as well. However, once you start using it a bit you will definitely get more familiar understanding how it works. So after you have set the end points on both the right side and the bottom side, you scroll down and go to margin and just put it to zero and zero because margin is the distance between the edge and your window here. So let's put it back to zero and let's right click main and let's begin by adding our tab container. And this is the container of our tabs and tabs is another node we're gonna add inside our tab container. So I'm just gonna stick to the base, I'm not gonna go into all of the signals, I'm just gonna give you the essential of what you need. For example, I'm gonna show you how to use tab change signal with our tab container. But before we do that, I'm gonna make sure to set our anchor points to the end and end on both the right and bottom as well on this one. And let's set the margin to zero and zero, good. So let's to test it all out, I'm gonna press Ctrl S to save, I'm gonna name this scene main TSCN, then I'm gonna hit play again in order to select our main scene, because no main scene has been defined, so I'm gonna select select, double click main, hit play, and now when I stretch the window it will fit to it. Perfect. So how do we use our tab container? Well first thing off we need to add tabs to our tab container, so I'm gonna right click tab container, select add child node, and then I'm gonna search for tabs and select it. Now the name on our tabs is the name that appears in our tab and that can be a bit awkward but there is no property on our inspector to set the name of our tab. So for example if we wanted our first tab to be some sort of uh, overview I would name the node itself overview. So in order to add more nodes all I have to do is select this and press ctrl D to duplicate this and we will have another node. In our scene tree the node is hidden but keep in mind even if both nodes are visible in the scene tree only one of these nodes will appear when you hit play and that is set by the tab container. So if you take a look at the tab container on the right side here we see our current tab is zero and that will be our first overview. We start from zero, one, two, three and so on depending on how many tabs you have. We also have the option to align the tabs on the left, center and right. So let's go back to our overview. I'm gonna turn off overview 1. I'm gonna rename this to, uh, let's say, report. Maybe this is some sort of software you're making and you want a report tab. So how do I, how do the elements work in our tabs? Well, it's quite easy. Now if you select the tab now, you see our boundary box is very small and that is not what you want. You probably want to stretch this to fit the tab container. So on the overview I'm gonna do the same as I did with the control node and tab container node and that is to make sure it stretches. So I'm gonna go all the way down here because our anchor point already had the end on the right and bottom. So I'm gonna select margin, I'm gonna select... Actually I'm gonna enter 5 on all because I do want some margin between these. There we go. So when I were to add elements in our overview now, let's add a sprite. And let's use the Godot icon that's provided in all new projects. So let's go on the right side, select a texture, select load and select the icon that is in our folder. Let's move it down, let's make it weird. And then I'm gonna duplicate this sprite. I'm gonna insert this byte inside report. So if I now were to turn off our view and turn on report and then move our sprite one, everything under each tab belongs to the tab. So if I turn off this, turn on this, let's hit play and change between the tabs, you can actually see the different element inside them. So it's actually quite easy to implement and use because it's all in the same spot, it's just hidden. So that's basically how you add tabs and how you can control the contents of each tab. So let's begin by adding a signal on our tab container. I'm gonna right click our tab container. Actually, I'm gonna right click main. Perhaps you have something that's supervising all the elements inside your program or game or whatever it is. I'm gonna create our main.gd, select create. There are two ways of assigning a signal and one is to just do it from code and the other is from the editor. And I'm gonna stick with the basics for now because we are focusing on our tab container here. So I'm gonna select our tab container. So let's double click tab change. Let's select main. Let's make a fitting method name here. I'm just gonna remove this part and just use on tab change and select connect. And this will create a function inside our main node script. Let's print out. I have selected 
tab number and a space plus string and tab. Let's remove the pass here. Let's control S to save and let's hit play. So when I change the report now, it should print out a tab number of one. Back to overview, back to report and so on. But what if you wanted to change the selected tab from code? How do you do that? Well, let's go to our main script here and let's change the tab on the ready here, just to make it simple for demonstration purposes. The first thing I need to do, I need to get a reference to our tab container. And in our case, I can just use var tab container equals get underscore node, and then the relative path to our tab container. Using our tab container, I can change the tab from code by just running tab container dot set underscore current tab, and then the integer of the tab we want to select. So for example, the default is set to zero. So if I change it to one from inside ready, when we run here, it's gonna change from zero to one basically immediately. So you probably won't see it ever being on zero, but just know that it changes to one now. So now report should appear and it does. Now there's one thing you should keep in mind and that is when using on tab change, it doesn't actually run on tab change. It runs when you select a tab, which is in my opinion, a flaw or perhaps even a bug. If I were to multiple times click report, it would keep running the tab change, even though we haven't actually changed. And that is definitely a flaw. And that might be something to note. But hopefully it'll change that in the future. So it'll actually be on the change, not on click. So that's pretty much it. If you have further questions about tab container, please let me know. If you felt I left something important out, definitely let me know and I will see if I can add an annotation somewhere. Let me know what you want to know more about in the future and I will see what I can do. So thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye!